So next we're going to look at Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis. Um, last lesson we looked at Bowlby's um, evolutionary theory for attachment. So we explained um, how Bowlby would suggest that attachment forms. Today's a little bit different. We're going to look at how, what he would say would happen if the mother and baby have some kind of deprivation so that that bond is broken. So there's two different problems that can happen with attachments. Um, first of all, one that we're going to look at today is deprivation. So this is when an attachment is formed normally, but the infant and the primary caregiver are then separated. So what do we mean by deprivation? This means an existing attachment is disrupted. And for example, um, we're going to look at a study by Robertson and Robertson in the lesson, um, whereby they went to um, a few hospitals, they looked at uh, observing uh, different infants when they uh, the bond between the infants and the caregivers, uh, caregivers had been broken. Uh, we won't look at this during the uh, screencast today, but there is another form of uh, or another problem with attachment. This is known as privation. This is when an infant doesn't have the opportunity to form any attachment with a caregiver during the sensitive period, and uh, this is very rare, as you can imagine. It, it very more often than not, even if the um, infant doesn't. Um, form an attachment with the uh, caregiver they'll form an attachment with someone else whether that's a, you know a, a teacher or a grandparent or an auntie or another family member uh, a guardian whoever so um, this is quite a rare situation and um, we will have a look at in the lesson um, a case by the name of Jeannie and another case uh, who are two boys known as the Czech twins So moving on to look at Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis. As you can remember, or I hope you remember, maternal deprivation means um, when they have built a maternal bond, so they have attached to the mother figure, the primary caregiver, and then they are deprived of that bond. So the bond is disrupted either through a hospital visit, a death of a parent, possibly a, a, a prison sentence, uh, and that could be short term or it could be long term. Now, Robertson and Robertson and Bowlby together, um, they both agree that um, short-term separation from an attachment figure leads to distress, and they name this the PDD model. This stands for protest, despair, detachment. So in the protest stage, there will be lots of crying, looking for the parent, possibly moving towards the door of where the parents left uh, or, or exited the room. Um, despair is when they move their feelings and their anger and their upset more inwards. Um, so they would do things like sucking their thumb, using teddies and blankets for comfort. And in the final stage, they then detach from that caregiver. So if the um, caregiver did return um, during that stage, there would be anger. They would be pushing away of the parent. They're angry towards them. They've detached from them. And the child's attachment relationship with their primary caregiver leads to, as you know, the development of the internal working model. And this can be disrupted if that deprivation occurs. So, a number of different features uh, in regards to Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis. We've got, again, um, a few that we looked at last lesson. So, again, the idea of the internal working model, monotropy, the critical period we've come across before. Um, the three on the kind of left-hand side are quite new uh, for today's lesson. So, the PDD model, the effects of deprivation being irreversible, and the consequences of deprivation themselves. So, internal working model, the attachment relationship, as we know, acts as a prototype for all future relationships, therefore disrupting the internal working model and disrupting the attachment can have really severe consequences. Um, as we know from the previous lesson, this internal working model acts as a template and it affects our future expectations of relationships with our own children and romantic partners. So in terms of the internal working model, if there's any kind of disruption to that attachment with the primary caregiver, uh, in particular during those first two and a half to three years, this can have very negative consequences down the line. So, for example, an infant who suffers from deprivation, they may feel um, rejected, they may feel unloved, they may feel um, that their care has been inconsistent, and they would uh, learn to expect this down the line when they're older. 
So PDD model I went through um, on one of the previous slides. I'll just run you through it again. So protest is where the child cries, they scream, they protest angrily when the parent leaves. They will try to cling on to the parent to stop them leaving. If the parent does leave, then they will possibly move towards the door where they have left if they can. Despair, the child's protesting begins to stop. They appear to be a lot calmer, but inside they are still upset. Uh, the child refuses any other's attempts for comfort and they seem to comfort themselves and they seem quite withdrawn, uninterested in anything. As I said, they might use uh, kind of dummies, blankets, toys um, in their own attempt for comfort. And finally, detachment. If the separation continues, the child will start to engage with other people again, but they will reject the caregiver on their return and they will show signs of anger towards that caregiver. So, uh, next feature of the deprivation hypothesis is monotropy. So, Bowlby believed that the primary bond with the, um, usually the mother, the primary caregiver, is a lot more important than any other of the bonds. As we said, this bond develops first and it's different from any other subsequent attachments. Um, linking this to deprivation, um, if the bond's broken through deprivation, this would have detrimental effects, of which I will go through with you on the next couple of slides. Uh, the critical or sensitive period, as we know, the um, if the mothering is delayed uh, until after two and a half to three years, um, then this, Bowlby said, was almost useless. Uh, equally, if it's broken or disrupted during this first two and a half or three years, then the infant will suffer from irreversible long-term consequences. Um, this might be separation or this might be loss. And to recap, in terms of those consequences, um, cognitive difficulties, social and emotional difficulties and intellectual difficulties. So these are the irreversible consequences of deprivation. The disruption of attachment leads to cognitive, social, emotional and intellectual. Uh, and a particular example of emotional uh, difficulties is affectionate psychopathy. And this is the idea that um, a person isn't able to care about or feel any affection towards other people. So a study that we can use to support the maternal deprivation hypothesis uh, is called the 44 Thieves Study. Uh, it was conducted by Bowlby in 1944. He used an opportunity sample of 88 children. Uh, Bowlby worked in a clinic, so he took these children um, from, where the, from the clinic that he worked in. And 44 of these uh, were juvenile thieves, so they were young thieves. And the other 44, they acted as controls. So there were individuals who'd been referred to the clinic because of emotional problems but they hadn't committed any crime so that was the difference between the two groups uh, a psychologist assessed the IQ and also the emotional attitudes um, towards the tests uh, the social worker interviewed a parent to record details of the child's early life so were there any periods of separation and finally, Bowlby conducted an in, uh, initial interview with the child and the accompanying parent and he was looking for this affectionless psychopathy so what did he find? So as you can see from the graph on the right hand side, um, in terms of the thieves and the controls, a much, much higher number of thieves had um, a separation from the mother. And Bowlby found that actually more than half of the juvenile thieves had been separated. And he said this was for six months or longer during the first five years of their life. The control group, they only had two who had such a separation. So a massive difference between the two groups there in terms of the separation. Um, he also looked at the um, how many had this affection of psychopathy. So he found that about, four to, uh, about 32 percent, which was 14 of the young thieves, showed this affection of psychopathy and none of the control group were affectionless psychopaths and um, so that's going to show you there that this um, kind of high amount of early separation leading to quite a few of the um, experimental group the thieves having affectionless psychopathy that wasn't the case in the control group so to test yourself without looking at the notes or having a look at your pre-reading you need to make sure that you can explain the six key features of Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis please make sure that you can link these to uh, deprivation itself you don't want to be explaining them in the same way that you've explained them for uh, his evolutionary theory which explains why we attach and um, second of all you need to explain the stages of the PB, uh, PDD model and finally explaining the method and the results of the 44 thieves study and being able to link it to the theory itself.